I started meditating on that word in September 1972, and the Lord just bottom lined it and said, you give me the best, and I will restore the rest. And that has been a lifelong journey for me. That wasn't some new thing. I began at that po point giving him the best of my time and anything that he provided for me and giving on behalf of my family to see a family that had great potential get restored. And I can honestly stand here and say now, after 50-something years, 50 years now, that God has restored all and is still leading me forward into the best. So let's thank God for that. But see, that word went down so deep in me. And as I would pursue him over first fruit, that word, see, the word of God goes down in your bone marrow. It's quick and sharp and powerful than any two-edged sword, piercing asunder, dividing the thoughts and intents of your heart, getting down into your bone marrow. And if you'll let that word get down in your bone marrow, what it's going to do is as your blood manufactures... From your bone marrow, it is carrying that word to every thought process of your body. And that word started in September of 1972. And every time I give and every time I pursue him by revelation over first fruit, that word is activated by revelation through my body. It pumps through my heart. It causes the cells of my brain to come alive. It can reach into a place when I'm sick. I have, I know that word can get to that place in my body that's sick. I am confident. And I went, I have gone through my trials, uh, deathly trials, but I've always been confident because I have given the best. That word can get to that place where the doctor said there's a cancer and cause it to be penetrated and perforated and removed from my body. That is how powerful the Word of God is. And when you move in timing in the Word, it is going to give you day-by-day -day revelation of how to succeed on the path He's put you on. Look at somebody and say, you are special. Hell hates you being special. I want you to know that every one of us in here are special. You wouldn't even be here if you weren't special. And the Lord has, from the time you were formed in your mother's womb, didn't matter if you were a rape victim, didn't matter how you came about, you were being matrixed by him. He was putting you together to call you back to him because he had a special plan for you. Doesn't matter how bad daddy was. Doesn't matter how bad grandpa was. He has a plan. Matter of fact, when Kent was speaking on, as uh, on ascending and being in heavenly places, I can still remember when that happened to me. I was riding the bus uh, to and from downtown Houston because traffic was so bad, and it was when Houston was in an explosion time during the 70s. And on the way down there, first of all, the love of God overwhelmed me. I, and I said, Lord, I don't know why I even deserve to experience your love like that. And the Lord spoke to me and said, that's how much I loved your dad. And I knew everything my dad had done. See, God is not conditional on how much he loves you. He loves you. Whether you reject him or not, he loves you. And then on the way back, I, uh, coming home that night, after 6 that night, I was driving back and I was reading the book of Ephesians. And it said, 
every blessing in heavenly place is yours. And all of a sudden, I felt myself leaving the bus. I thought the bus was going to turn over, actually. I thought, I'm going to turn this bus over. Faith started coming from my toenails all through my hands. I felt like my hair was electric. And I, I thought, I said, Lord, I'm so, I, I can't believe this. And I found myself seated in heavenly places, just as the Word says. And seated in that place, it was a place next to me, and the seat was vacant. And the Lord was in that room with us, and he said, that was your dad's seat. And he showed me all the blessings he chose not to get. See, you, you don't see that, don't see all that from how victimized you've been. See what they left that they never chose to enter into. See, if you'll do that, all of a sudden, the Lord said, you can have all of his that he didn't take. It belongs to your bloodline. Then he showed me my grandpa's, and he said, you can have all those that he didn't take. It belongs to your bloodline. I am telling you, when you see how special you are and who you are in him, hell won't be able to stop you from getting what belongs to you. Now, with that, we have to also understand that we are a corporate people. We're a corporate people that's rising up together. We rise individually we are ascended, we're seated individually, but we're also seated corporately. And how we come together and worship and are seated corporately is going to cause the territory that we're part of to come alive. And that is what's so important because the kingdom, see, there's a new church forming. That's why the Lord, I think, pulled us aside. He's forming us new so he can gather us new. And every time we come back together, just like Ken explained to you uh, of how you guys are coming back together here differently, every time we come back together, we're making headway in kingdom expression. And kingdom unlocks. See, one of the things you want to remember about 22 is 22 is linked with keys. That means we're all getting keys transferred to us. Every time you make a faith act, a key to the kingdom is being transferred to you. That key is going to cause you to unlock something that has never been unlocked. There are gifts in us right now. See, that's why Shabbat becomes so important. Because it's a month where dormancy still exists, but sap's moving. That means all of a sudden you're going to get keys this month to unlock something in you so the sap can flow through you. You're going to become a conduit in a new way. And then all of a sudden that sap's going to th flow through you in such a way that people are going to see it seep out of your pores. It's going to look like a favor on you. And all of a sudden when you walk in to gain access somewhere that you're supposed to have access, you're going to have the favor and they're going to say, come on in. Look at somebody and say, come on in. <laughs> 